Hi, and welcome back. I just picked up another uh, BTEC BF F8 HP Pro radio, and I want to do a couple more videos on these. I thought I'd do one on actually three more. I want to do one on programming manually uh, the GPS and then taking them out in the field and um, seeing how they sound and what kind of range we can get out of them. But I thought today we would take a look at the GPS function. Now there's a few steps we need to take before we can use the GPS function. And we're gonna walk through those steps and I'll show you what to do so you can start using the GPS on um, the radio. First thing we want to do is set our GPS to the correct time zone. So we're going to push the menu button and we're going to go down to GPS or you could just push four. Uh, we're going to hit enter and we're going to go to two or just hit the down button and we'll go to the time zone. Now this uses GMT or Greenwich Mean Time and we're going to have to go take a look at our map and see which time zone we're in. Go over to North America and I'm around Lake Tahoe which is here. So we are in, if we look here, Minus eight is the time zone we want to set our computer or our GPS to. All right, so let's go down to minus eight. Or should I say up to minus eight? Mine was set at minus five. And we're going to select minus eight. Uh, if we want to double check it, we can see that it is on minus eight. All right, let's go into GPS again. And we did time zone. Let's do speed unit. And since we're in the United States, we're gonna have it on miles per hour, which it's already on. Now, one thing I do not see on this is the altitude is going to be read in meters, and I don't see a setting for the United States to put it in feet, which is not a big deal, but I find it interesting they have a speed that's in um, our units of measurement, but not in using the metric system. So I find that kind of interesting. Next setting we need is number four, which is GPS mode. And if we go in there, you're going to see GPS, BDS, or GPS plus BDS. Now I'm going to set it to GPS. And let's make sure we did that correctly. I'm not sure I did. Yeah, I'm on GPS. And what the difference is, is GPS is the United States. That's our GPS system that we use here. And BDS, pronounced Beidou, is the Chinese satellite system. That's their GPS system. And I'm not really that familiar with it from what I've read. Um, it's operated by the China National Space Administration. And is, I'm looking here as I read this. And they use 24 different satellites in medium circle orbits covering the world. And the United States system, which is operated by the Department of Defense, uses also uses 24 satellites i'm familiar with our system and like i said i don't really know much about the chinese uh, system i don't know if it 
collects data or anything. So I'm just going to set it, like I said, um, to our satellite system we use in the United States. All right, there is another important setting you have to do to be able to use this GPS with another um, Beofang radio. I think they have a couple different radios with GPSs, but in order for it to communicate with another radio to send your information or receive information, you have to change the radio ID. And I'll show you, I've already done that on both radios. So let me show you here, and then I'll show you how to do it. And if we look at the radio info, by default, it's the radio ID is 100. You need to put your first radio at 101 and your second radio at 102. And right now I'm running firmware version uh, 0.33, which is the latest firmware they have for this radio. All right, I just pulled out my second radio here. And if we go to radio info, you can see that the radio ID on this radio is 102. So if you had a third radio you were going to use, you would need 103, etc. You would just keep increasing the number. So if you're doing with a, uh, if you're going to do this with a buddy, you have to make sure you have your radios um, not on the same ID. So let's go ahead and take a look how you change the ID. This is not in the instruction manual. We can use either Chirp or the BTEC software. So if you choose to use the BTEC software, you need to go to Window, and you need to go to, I believe it's DTMF, and that is where you can change the radio ID. So on my first radio, it's going to be 101. On the second radio, it's going to be 102. Software, you need to go to settings, and I think it's DTMF in code settings. I could be wrong. No, that is correct. And under here, it's going to be the ANI code, which here is set to 101, which is my first radio. And if you do it on your second radio, you want it to be to 102. Also on settings, on basic settings and chirp, you could also, if you wanted to do your time zone um, or GPS mode, you could go here and change them manually through, well, you can change them through the computer here. So we're all good to go now. We have both radios programmed to 101 and 102 for their ID. Reading um, the notes about this radio, known firmware issues, it says the GPS altitude display by the radio can be inaccurate and it generally manifests itself at an altitude of 6,500 meters or higher. Um, it also does not have a GPS almanac. So which means is it's not going to remember its location, its last location. It's not um, going to start right up. So anytime you restart your radio, it may take a while till it acquires the GPS fix. And usually if it's like other GPS radios, it won't get a fix until it reads at least three satellites. And let's see what else. It says, it says both the requesting and responding radios need to be on their GPS screen 
in order for one radio to request GPS, GPS position of another radio. So in other words, they most, they, both of them must be on the GPS mode. The easiest way to get this in the GPS mode instead of going through the menu is you can hold the AB key. And if you look, you can see a little satellite icon that appears up on the screen, the top. So off, on. And you don't want to leave the GPS on unless you need to because from what I've read, it uh, consumes more battery power. I'm not sure how much. All right, so let's um, turn on the GPS on this one. And GPS is on both of them now. All right, now to go to the GPS screen, you press and hold the home button. And you can see that they're acquiring satellites. And we should, on the right-hand column there, we should get a green GPS when they acquire the satellite. Okay, we have it on one. And there goes the second one. And as you can see, Um, let's take a look at our longitude and latitude. 38.90911, 38.90919. That's pretty darn close. Uh, let's see, that's northwest for 120.01533 and 120.01530. And our height is 1,960 meters. So I'm um, turned it on again here. It says we're at our height again, 1,947 meters. So that's pretty close to 6,300 feet. And I do know my altitude here is around 6,400 feet. So it's pretty close. And in the past, using GPSs or um, I've always had trouble getting a, a really highly accurate altitude reading. So it's, it's pretty close in the, in the ballpark where we're at. All right, let's go ahead and send one location to another. I went back in to, I think I did it through Chirp. No, actually I did it through the BTEC software and I changed they have them listed as contact one, contact two, all the way up to 20. And I changed the first two to radio one and radio two to make it a little easier. Now, again, I don't find this very user friendly. I think there's room for improvement, but these are also brand new and I'm sure with software updates, they'll probably address some of these concerns. So let's go ahead and send the position of radio one to radio two. And as you can see, we're on the my location screen. So I need to go to radio two, which is over here. And I'm going to push the transmit button and that will send my location. And you're going to hear um, the radios talk to each other. So let's go ahead and do it. And let's try that again. Okay, there we go. And you can see that we have position success up here. So we successfully read the location of that radio. And then again, if we want to read from radio two to radio, uh, if we want to send from radio two to radio one, um, I would probably go on my location screen to show you this. And I would find radio one, which is right here. Okay. 
and you can see that we sent the position to there. And then also, while we're at it here, if you push the home button, you can also, um, it'll put the person in a circle since we're right next to each other. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but um, the red dot is gonna be in the center. The red dot is where you are. And then we get another dot uh, the other radio you just requested the information for that would be within that circle. And I will demonstrate that when I do a radio test on the range. Um, I think I'll send out a GPS request and we can look at that with someone probably nine miles away and see what it looks like. So there you have it. There's the steps involved in setting up your radio so you can send your GPS signal to another radio or even uh, setting up the radio so you can use it as a GPS receiver. I'm hoping in future software updates that they add more features to these radios and make them a little simpler to use like I said, I've, I have quite a bit of experience using a GPS receiver from hiking and riding my mountain bike, and it would be kind of nice to see the software uh, be similar to the other radios out there, the dedicated GPS receivers. But then again, these are primarily ham radios. So I, I'm glad to see this feature on them. I just think there could be some room for improvement. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.